My name is Jordan Johnson, and I'm one of the developers here at FlexSim, and I'm very excited to introduce some new features for version 2017 update 2. These features include big changes to the dashboard charting system and to the way we collect data in FlexSim. With these new changes and these new tools, it's even easier to create your own custom statistics and to create charts based on those custom statistics without having to know a lot of the internals of how FlexSim's chart system works. The system is built on two new objects that I've created. One is the statistics collector, and the other is the calculated table. So I'll introduce those two new features, and I'll explain the motivation behind these changes, and also show you how you can make some really neat charts and graphs. So some of the biggest changes in version 2017 update 2 deal with statistics and charts. Uh, to go over some motivation for these changes, uh, we'd like to just kind of talk about how we came at it. The purpose of simulation is to generate data. Uh, a lot of times we get caught up as we make models and we have lots of features for making models and making the model making process even easier. But the point of simulation is to get data out. Now the data that each user wants varies greatly. Uh, some users want to use FlexSim on a day-to-day -day basis. Some people just need to make uh, one particular decision about a new facility. Uh, a lot of times they want to just use FlexSim to generate that data and then they want to export it to some other program like Excel or Tableau. Uh, so the question for us is, how can we make sure to keep data the focus of simulation, to make sure that the user knows that the point of what they're doing is to get data? So our previous statistics system in version 2017 update 1 and previous, we had dashboard charts. Now charts are great. They are excellent at visualizing data. They're very helpful when you're debugging a model. Uh, they work with InFlexSim and they update as the model runs so you get a live view of how your system is behaving. Uh, they're really handy for generating performance measures or other system metrics for the experimenter and optimizer. They can also be used to calculate uh, aggregate data like sums and averages for a set of objects, particularly in groups. However, there's some drawbacks to this older system that our users have come up against quite often. Uh, the first one is that charts gather data, but they don't expose it very well. It's very difficult to see the raw numbers that are being used to draw the data. Uh, you can export the data from charts, but it's very difficult to understand what the data is going to look like when you export it. The user doesn't have any control over how that data is exported. Another drawback is that the chart types are kind of confusing. Uh, in the chart library, there are some charts that deal with process flow objects, there are some charts that deal with regular 3D objects, and there are some that deal with tracked variables. And it's very difficult to know which charts deal with which kind of object. It's also difficult to know how that chart is going to display. Some charts will display as a histogram, some display as a time plot, some you can choose between those two. It's very hard to know how it's going to display until you make it and go look at the option. Finally, there are some statistics and data that the charts just don't get by default. Many of our users want custom statistics and it's often frustrating or impossible to make a chart based on that data in the current system. Also, users often want to export their data and they're not even interested in making a chart in the first place. So to resolve these issues and also to maintain the good features that we have, we've upgraded the statistics system in version 2017 update 2. Uh, we've made two new objects for collecting, display, and exporting. The first one is the statistics collector and the second is a calculated table. And then we've made uh, new charts for displaying the data in those two objects. So you can have a time plot, a histogram, the Gantt chart, the charts that we're familiar with and we already had in FlexSim. However, the difference is that these charts have separated the task of ca gathering data, and that is the role of the statistics collector and calculated table. So this statistics system overview shows how it is now in version 2017 update 2. At the very bottom of our hierarchy, we have object and activity events. Discrete event simulation is all about events. It doesn't do anything um, except for process events. Uh, those events drive the object and activity statistics. For example, when an, object, when an item enters an object, the content goes up. And when it exits, the output and stay time change. Uh, in the old system, in seven, update 1 and previous, uh, the legacy charts work directly with the object and activity statistics to try to display some of the data that was going on. In update 2, the statistics collectors help you really gather and massage exactly the data that you want, and you can collect more or less or whatever data you're exactly looking for using this new tool. Uh, from there, you can chart that data directly, or you can use a calculated table to further refine and transform your data. And again, you can point a chart directly at the calculated table. 
So what is a statistics collector? It's an object that maps data from events and objects into a table. So here's the high level story. First, you identify objects and data that you're interested in, or sorry, and events. And then you set up the statistics collector to listen to those events and store relevant data. And then finally, you configure the, the table contained in the statistics collector so that the data you care about is placed in the correct row and column. So I would like to show you an example of a statistics collector. If we go back to this model that we're looking at, this, this statistics collector is listening to the on entry of the queues in this model and the on exit of the processors. In the data recording tab, you'll notice that I've set up each item to have its own row, and that I've got a column for which item it was, when did it enter, and when did it exit. If we view the table, for this statistics collector, we can see that we have item number one. It entered at 8.05 a.m. and it exited at 8, sorry, 8.05 seconds a.m. And it exited, uh, looks like, nine seconds later at 8.14. And this is true for, this is collected for all the items that have come through my model. So you can see that I've used the t statistics collector to collect very customized data. Uh, it makes no assumptions about any of the columns that are in your table. Uh, next, we have a calculated table. That's an object that uses a SQL query to generate another table. So the high-level story for that object is that you identify the table or set of tables that you're interested in refining. Maybe you want to sort. Maybe you want to filter. Maybe you want to do another operation that you can get from queries. So the second step is to write a query that does that operation. And then third, you determine how often you want to update the data in that table. For example, back here in Flexim, I have a calculated table that gets the item and then subtracts the enter time from the exit time. And we call that the time in the area. And we select that from Statistics Collector 2. So as a result, we get a table. One column has the item number, and then the second column has the difference in time between the enter and exit time for each item. And again, that was the example that I was showing. So for charts, the new charts, they simply point at a statistics collector or calculated table. They don't do any event listening. They don't do any uh, data gathering. They simply observe the data that's already in a statistics collector or calculated table. That way, the data is completely separate from the chart. It feels a lot more like uh, Excel or other popular spreadsheet programs where your data sits in one section, and you simply select it and add a chart to the sheet. Um, this also means that chart options and any kind of configuration can be changed. Because it's data centric, you don't need to reset the model. As long as the data is there, you can visualize it however you would like. Which includes creating additional charts after the model has been run. Um, it decouples the process of when do I need to make my chart and also when can I view the chart and have it work. Um, an additional benefit is that multiple charts can visualize the same data. So for example, in this model, we have the stay time of our queues. The histogram and the time plot are both pointing at the same statistics collector. That collector is collecting the stay time of each item as it comes through, and also which object it passed through at the time. And as you can see, the data is the same. It's just visualized differently. The histogram's counting, uh, and the time plot is plotting each stay time versus time. Each kind of visualization has advantages and disadvantages, but it's nice that both kinds of charts point to the same data. Uh, the new system features include uh, the fact that statistics collectors and calculated tables can both be treated as global tables. You can run a SQL query on them, as we saw in the previous example, and you can also access them using the table constructor. Um, there's an example below there where you, we're accessing statistics collector 1. Uh, second of all, the statistics collectors and calculated tables can easily be exported to a CSV file. Uh, the data in each of those can be formatted so that Excel and Tableau can correctly interpret times. Uh, this is especially helpful um, for exporting to third-party um, software. Also, charts are the new charts are fully integrated with the new dashboard system, including in th with the experimenter and optimizer. Uh, statistics collectors and calculated tables. If you make a chart based on them, you can save those dashboard charts just like you would for any of the old uh, charts. 
Um, in addition, the time plots and Gantt charts have a dynamic time axis, which means if a, the time span on the x-axis or on the y-axis is short, the ticks between it will be relatively small, a, uh, a high level of detail. As the time span grows, the tick marks uh, happen at different time intervals so that the level of detail decreases. So it'll go from seconds to minutes to days to, to uh, weeks and months to years even. Uh, also, the statistics collector is completely integrated with the experimenter and optimizer so that data for each collector is automatically saved for each replication and scenario. Um, and as a final bonus feature for this system, there's new SQL syntax that allows you to uh, query all of the replication and scenario results as if from a single table. Uh, the query below, select star from experiment.statisticscollector1, where scenario equals 2, allows you to get just the data from Statistics Collector 1 for every replication of Scenario 2. Uh, that way it's easy to make a table that ap analyzes experiment and replication data. You can export this data, you could chart that data. It just makes it easier to see where is the data in your model. So that concludes the brief introduction to the new Statistics Collector features in version 2017 update 2. We look forward to getting your feedback on answers.com and also with emails to dev at Thanks very much.